Um, I'm Joan Hawkins, and I am an, an ambassador from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I have hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which causes the fibrosis. And I was diagnosed back in um, 15, June of 15. And miraculously, I have remained pretty stable since then. There have been some ups and downs, little minor waves, but for the most part, I am stable. So I feel blessed about that. I do wear oxygen 24 seven, uh, but I live alone and I am, I've got family around, but we're all leading our own lives um, with this little, um, I don't know what the word is I want, but um, pretty normally. So as I said, I feel blessed about that. What I would like to introduce to you today is something that you can do any time of the day or night uh, and as often throughout the day as you want. It's based on uh, something called Kundalini meditation. And it is, um, it comes from yoga. It's about 3000 years old. And um, the benefits of it of the meditation and the guided imagery uh, reaches all through our body as far as energy goes and through our minds and our hearts and our soul and hopefully grounds us to Mother Earth and helps us overcome some anxiety, depression, um, stress, it's, it's got quite, um, quite a medicinal purpose to it. And I hope that you can feel a little of that today uh, because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a relaxation so that your body from head to toe feels totally relaxed. And then I'll take you through a guided imagery that I hope will also make you feel um, energized to um, to a level of peace. There's um, articles about this type of meditation on the internet and you can also put um, say guided imagery or just put uh, Kundalini meditation in your search engine and you'll come up with a bunch of examples of it and articles about it and you can choose your own guided imagery um, and you can pick a recording so that somebody can take you through basically what I'm taking you through. Some are 10 minutes, some are an hour. It just depends on how much time you have and, um, and what your desire is. But um, like I said, you can do it as many times throughout the day as you feel the need. Um, I think what it sounds like um, when you know someone, we're, we associate ourselves with death a lot, obviously. Um, we've seen a lot of people die. My brother died in 07 from IPF. Um, and then I was diagnosed in 15. So we've all been very associated with it for, for a long time now. And, and even when we know it's coming, it still puts us in, um, I think, a grief path. And this is why another reason I think this is so important is that grief has a path and a cycle, just like everything else. And, you know, you start out with the denial and then the bargaining and the anger and the depression. And we finally, hopefully, eventually work toward some form of acceptance. Um, but that path along the way can take a long time. Uh, it took me probably about 
well, several years to kind of get over my brother's death. Uh, he was only 64 when he died and none of us were ready for it. He even got a transplant and uh, was doing great until six days after the transplant. And then his system just stopped. It was, he was too sick when they gave it to him and his body couldn't take it. So yeah, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of associations with death, a lot of um, serious living. So um, when you feel the need to sort of bring your self back to a place of grounded energy, um, I think this is a good exercise for anybody and everybody. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is sit back in your chair, put your feet flat on the ground and relax your hands or your arms uh, in your lap and just kind of squiggle down into your seat to be sure that you have the most comfortable position. Use a lumbar pillow if you need one. Um, just get comfortable because we're going to be in this now for about maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to start at the top of your head and we're going to work out all our tensions and all of our little hot spots all the way down to the tip of our toes. So you can close your eyes if you like and just really get into what we're about to do here. Do you remember when you were in school and some kid would come up behind you and knock you on your head like with, the, with their fist and then they would release their fingers to make you believe that, that they were cracking an egg open on your head and that feeling of your fingers going down and you could just feel the ooze. Well, think that right now because our... It, the East Indians say that we have seven energy centers called chakras. And the first one is on the top of our head. So let's kind of feel our fingers open on the top of our head and feel that ooze coming down. That's right, Don. <laughs> and relax our scalps. Just feel that, that energy flowing down your head. It's calming, it's soothing. Feel it coming down your head. Relax your temples and your forehead. Unfurl your brows. If you have a headache, tell it to go away. Relax your eyebrows, your eyelids. Relax your nose and your cheeks. Relax the back of your head. Relax your ears. Relax your jaw. With your mouth closed, separate your teeth. Let your jaw drop. Let your tongue float in your mouth. Feel yourself pushing any tension in your head out, out and down. Relax your chin your jaw, start relaxing your neck, push any pain, any tension down and out of your body. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders. Feel as if you have hands on your shoulders and they're pushing the tension down and away from your head. 
Relax your upper chest, your upper back. Push all that tension away. Push it down and out. Relax your chest and your back between your shoulder blades. Let that tension go. Relax your forearms. Feel it all going down toward your elbow. Both arms. Keep pushing it down. From your chest, push it down to your waist. Don't forget to breathe. Breathe deeply. Move your diaphragm. You can breathe out through your nose or through your mouth, whichever is the best for you. Relax your waist. Feel your breathing. Push any negative energy out through your forearms. Into your hands. Into your fingers and out the tips of your fingers. Pushing all that negative energy, all that toxic energy out and away. Do a recheck on your upper body if you feel any tense spots, relax them. If you hear a sound that's distracting, let it go. If you have intruding thoughts, send them away. You can think about those things later. Keep pushing any negative energy that you have down and out of your body. Relax your stomach and your hips, your lower back. Relax your buttocks, your upper thighs. Pushing all this negative energy out and away from your body. Push it down through your upper thighs to your knees. Relax your legs. Just let the chair carry your weight. Don't worry about, don't worry about your chair. Just let it hold you. Push any negative energy through your knees, down through your calves. Relax your legs. Relax your ankles, your feet. Feel the energy as it oozes out through your feet, out the end of your toes. Just continue to push it out so that your whole body now feels relaxed. If there's any parts that are still tense, go back and revisit. Focus on relaxation. 
Focus on letting any of that negative energy go. Now I want you to picture yourself in your very favorite spot. It's your sanctuary spot. It's your place of empowerment. It's the spot you go to when you want to replenish. It can be indoors or outdoors. It can be any season of the year. Smell the air. Feel a soft breeze. Off in a distance, you see a big white light and it's moving toward you. You're not afraid of the light. And as the white light approaches you, it wraps itself around you like a warm blanket. And it holds you. It caresses you like a big hug. You think about this hug and the warmth that comes from it. You feel loved. You feel cared for, supported. You feel all of the prayers and the good wishes and the hopes for wellness that your friends and family have given you. Even some people who do not know you. The people who know that you need their emotional support. You feel a joy You feel well supported. You feel loved. Sit and stay in this position for as long as you want. When you feel like it, you may open your eyes. but we're in no hurry. I think what I'd like to do now is take a few minutes and if you're willing to give us an idea of 
where your sanctuary space was and how you came out feeling. Did you get the relaxation? Did you feel the love? Dobby, how about you? You have to unmute, sweetie. Oh, maybe Don has to do that for us. Don, can you unmute everyone now, please? I don't know if I can hear you. Everybody. I think everybody could unmute themselves. Yes, you can. Okay, I did. I felt very relaxed, very, I almost went to sleep actually. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, when I was doing my internship, my, my master's is in art therapy and um, I did it at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago several years ago, <laughs> but I did an internship at St. Luke's Medical Center and um, they did it on the oncology ward, adult uh, transplant ward. And a lot of times it would do just that. It, it would you'd go in the hospital room and they'd be laying in their bed and, and, uh, and start doing that. And it was wonderful because uh, obviously they're nervous, they're concerned, um, they're in pain. But if we could get them to participate in this relaxation, um, it did a lot. And a lot of them did fall asleep, sometimes for the first time in, in many hours. So that was good if it did that for you. Where was your safe place? Where did you go? It looks like Dottie may have left us. I don't know. Just muted. <clears throat> I muted me because I was coughing. <clears throat> oh, okay. Where was your safe place, Dottie? At the ocean. At the ocean. Good. Watching the water. I had a real life experience one time. I suppose this is what I would use if I were on the other end of this. I was walking along the beach in... Um, southern florida and i looked out and there was a very small little stingray like a baby that was in the shallow water and as i walked a ways this little stingray walked with me and as i turned around and walked back it turned and walked back with me and so i went out into the water a little bit and it went a little further out and i came back to the shore and it came back to the shore we did this little dance for probably about 20 minutes. It was the most, um, I, I don't even have the word to describe it, um, experience to be able to communicate via dance with this totally <laughs> wild natural being. And um, I, when I think about going to the beach, because that is my place of empowerment as well, um, I think about that little stingray and how much I enjoyed having that experience. How about the rest of you? Who else, who else wants to share? When I'm sitting here quietly with someone. Do what? When I'm sitting well, here I, quietly. Mom was on my plane. Sitting there quietly. Get over here. Well, uh, how about Joan Shiflet? You know, I actually learned to practice this when my husband was under the care of oncology and it worked so well with him. Mm -hmm. To this day, 
I usually have no problem relaxing. But if I do, I do this and I get to about right here and then I'm gone. But just now, um, you know, my sinuses were clearing up. They were running because my head was stopped up. They become unstopped. And I was just... Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, I was sitting in my chair and I couldn't feel anything. Everything was just light. I couldn't even feel my feet touching the floor. Great, great, great. But Super. The, the coolest thing about that was um, <clears throat> I went to my lake house. That's my safe haven. Mm -hmm. Literally sitting out on the deck and the sun was in my face. And when you talk about the breeze, I could just, I, I, I got ready to turn around to feel the breeze on my face. That, that's just amazing. I've never done that. So it was pretty amazing. Good, good. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. How about Dot and Dan? Where all did you go? Well, like everybody else, I went to the shore. It sort of looked like where Don is, except without the palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just look at Don's background and I'm relaxed. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that me. rhythm of the waves gently washing up on the shore, it just was so soothing. And um, uh, having had a rather stressful weekend, I it, it was really helpful to to have that experience and I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Joan. Oh, good, good, good. I guess my, my uh, place to think about would be similar to Dots. Uh, we've been to St. Simon's Island, Georgia many times. Mm -hmm. I find that a very peaceful place. We walked the beach and we sat and meditated, prayed. Uh, but I guess I need to be physically somewhere. So I thought, I mean, mainly, uh, where is the dearest place to you? And, and, and it, it needs to be for me something handy, handier than driving several <laughs> miles. And so I, I thought of the sofa in the, our living room. Uh, where, where I sit and watch TV or read, and I'm accompanied by Dot, thank God, and uh, and and that's that's a peaceful, relaxing place and a dear place to me. Absolutely. Some people go to their fireside and read a book. Um, it it's like I was saying, it's wherever you feel that empowerment, that peace, that, um, that sanctuary. And you in your favorite chair with your wife beside you, boy, that's, that's pretty powerful. Good for you. Thank you for what you know. How about you, George? Well, I got one. I, I Maybe I shouldn't say it, but I was in Chicago one time and had to walk about 12 blocks back to the hotel. And I talked to the valet and he said, where you been? I told him, he says, we don't even go down there in the daytime. Oh, oh thank you, God. <laughs> it was a peaceful walk. Absolutely. Actually, I, I, Chicago is pretty okay. I, I never felt unsafe there, but that was back around 99 and 2000. I don't know what it's like now, but I like Chicago. Well, you got a lot of gun fight there. <laughs> now, yes, I think you're probably right. But you found you found a nice place. You could smell the air. You could feel the breeze. Yes, it was good. It was nice walking. I wouldn't even thought that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, who else would like to go? I, I can just say at night, I often have trouble falling asleep. And if I do deep breathing, just in through my nose and hold for four or five seconds and breathe mm -hmm. out slowly through my mouth, it usually helps me fall asleep. Good. Pretty quickly. Good. Yet laying in bed, I don't, I don't get much past my head either. Um, yeah. So that's been helpful for me. It's helpful for falling asleep. Yes, you're right. We got a lot more people after we started. Some faces I can't see. All right, I'm going to mute because I'm going to wait. Oh, sure. I think that might be my. Like... That's key. Yeah. Yes, key. Yes. I said I'll share. Okay. <clears throat> kind of sad, but it is also very peaceful. Okay. I didn't go very far, but outside to my gazebo. Um, simply because last summer, my sister sent me a song entitled, Send Me a Butterfly. And the day after she sent me that, I went and sat out in my gazebo. And what flies into the gazebo but a big butterfly. That's great. That butterfly, to me, represents my son, who passed away in 2019. Oh, gosh. And the song is about... Uh, sending me a butterfly from heaven, you know, sending some, that's like a sign from heaven. And so I sat out there for, I don't know, 30 minutes, just looking at this butterfly and he was kind of just looking at me. And to me, that just brought so much peace that, hey, my son's still around, so. That's beautiful. That's, that's what, that's what that brought me to, which was, uh, you know, you, we talked about grief at the beginning, and you know, I'd be lying to say if I'm still not grieving, but you know, For the sure. memory like that is it, it. It helps me accept more. So, mm -hmm. but that that was good. That is good. Yeah, can't wait to springtime or summertime. Maybe we'll get another butterfly. <laughs> Who else would like to go now? I think sometimes we need to think of a really scenic and a beautiful sight that we've encountered in our past. And one of the most gorgeous places was in Tulum in Mexico. We were high up um, and I remember the rocks, you know, very rocky, but the sight below was all the gorgeous water. It was just breathtaking. First of all, you didn't expect it to be able to see such a sight. We had no idea what was below mm -hmm. and it was something that stopped you in your tracks. We literally had to sit on the rocks and take it in. And I think any time we're able to relate to something, um, it's that much easier, I think, to be able to get to that state of relaxation. You know, anything we've encountered or just so it isn't something that we really can't relate to. Mm -hmm. So that, that's basically what I try to do. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of the time it is the ocean and the waves. And I think 
that's the idea behind a lot of the sound machines. Um, I particularly like the rain. Um, I've always loved the rain. And to me, it's just something that's a gift from God, the rain. So I feel like that can be a, a very relaxing mode too. But, um, Joan, that, that is Barbara talking. It, she uh, doesn't identify, but I just wanted you to know that's Barbara. Okay. She makes some really valid points, really good points. What I probably would ask for all of you to do is take a few minutes when this call is over and journal this session, make a few notes. Um, if this is something you're not in the habit of doing, the journaling will help imprint it and, um, and you might think of it throughout the day, you know, as you're sitting either at your phone or at your laptop or your computer and, um, and remind you to do this. Because as I said, you can do this as many times throughout the day as you need. Um, I, I think that we, we get a lot of information from our monthly support calls. We get, um, I've been looking at the agenda for the conference that's coming up in November. And there's an awful lot of good information that we can get our hands on, um, good lectures to go to, but it's very highly intellectual. Um, and I think that there's probably room for adding some mental health issues. Uh, I keep seeing these things flash up on my screen, so I feel like I have to read them. Um, they're going to ask me to do some art therapy at this conference coming up, which I'm happy to do because I think it's needed. I think that, that once we realize that things like meditation and doing a little art, make a little music, um, anything that will sort of get to our subconscious um, and allow us to relax and open up that side of us um, we'll do a lot to help mitigate some of the pain that we carry around with us all the time as well. Because there is a lot of pain attached to this disease, not just physically, but emotionally. Uh, I think we all go through the grief process when we have to give up our retirement the way we had pictured it to be um, and start uh, curtailing some of our events that we thought we would be able to take advantage of, of doing and, um, and finding our way to cope with it. And sometimes it's really, really hard and it takes a while. Um, and for those of you that are caretakers to, to have to watch your loved one navigate this new twist in the road, which is your twist as well, it's um, it's hard. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. It's just hard. So I think anything that we can do to self-soothe, um, to kind of emotionally pamper ourselves, we don't want to stay down in the depths of depression. We want to work our way toward acceptance, but uh, that may make a little effort. And if this helps, um, I say turn to it as often as you need to. I've enjoyed doing this with you today. I hope it was of value to you and that you will come to make it a habit. Um, I'm gonna turn the meeting back over to one of the other Jones. <laughs> and uh, Here's I noticed that you really only have about 10 minutes left. And I'm not sure what business that she wanted to conclude. So it's all uh, good. 
you know what? I feel pretty confident that you've opened up a different type of door that we haven't been able to touch for some time. And Joan, I really appreciate you um, teaching us a technique um, that I know for sure definitely works. My personal experience. And yeah. it's something that you do have to uh, do to get even better at it. Right. Just like exercise, just like good nutrition. Mm -hmm. Well, it was my pleasure. It was wonderful meeting all of you. Thank you so much. And, and I hope we're all at the conference in November. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank oh, my you. Pleasure. Um, my could pleasure. You, before you go, could you spell Kundalini? Is it with a K or a yes. C? Yes, it's K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I. -I. Okay, that's how I had it. Perfect. <laughs> Just in case anybody wants to Google it. Absolutely. Oh, perfect. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you Good very point. much. All right, group. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye.